Hi guys, my name is Ashley and today I'm working with Constantina to present to you an experiment designed for a stage 2 classroom that investigates the behaviour of light. If you direct your attention to the screen for a moment, you will see that we have included from the science and technology syllabus the working scientifically and physical world outcomes that correlate with your experiment today. Before immediately jumping into the experiment, I'm going to quickly break down the specific concept of light behaviour we will be investigating, along with any information that you would need to know in regards to teaching this in your classroom. Constantina and I believe that it is an excellent pedagogical practice within science to make sure that the students are well informed of their learning intentions and that these learning intentions are explicit and well structured. So in saying that, let me break down the specific light behaviour we'll be investigating today in our experiment. Our experiment will be investigating the differences in objects' shadows to determine their transparency, with the outcome of this experiment leading the students to the conclusion that shadows are formed by an interruption of light. For context, this experiment should only take place once your students already have the scientific knowledge that a shadow needs a light source and an object, and that shadows are created by an object blocking the light source. The next stage in our understanding which is what we're using the experiment to prove, is that an object can block all or part of a light source. Okay, let's jump over to Constantina who will now run through the experiment with you. Before we begin the experiment, it is important to know that it is essential to create a risk assessment in any science experiment. Whilst this experiment is not of high risk, it still poses potential cautions to be aware of, you can now pause the video if you are interested in reading further about the hazards, risks and the control measures of this experiment. Now, let's jump into the experiment. The first step of any science experiment is to collect your materials. Side note, today I have a few items already selected and ready to go, but in a classroom setting the students will pick their own materials for engagement and enthusiasm purposes. The materials I've included are a lamp, a see-through container lid, baking paper, a book and a table. The second thing we need to do is set up our environment. We will need a stable desk and one lamp turned on. Before we begin, I would like everyone to jot down on SmartDraw their hypothesis on which material is classified as a transparent, translucent or opaque object. Let's begin the experiment. Place the see-through container lid underneath the lamp. What do you see? Side note, students will take a photo and upload it to SmartDraw. For the purpose of this assignment, I have already uploaded it. As you can see, a student would upload a photo and write a description. In this case, the student should write, transparent, the see-through container lid, the light was able to pass through. Step six, place the book underneath the lamp. What do you notice? Step seven, students should record their observations and result using SmartDraw, whether the object is either transparent, translucent or opaque. Looking at the example here, the student has uploaded a photo and written that the book stopped the spread of light. Step eight, place the baking paper underneath the lamp. What do you see? Step nine, students should record their observations and results using SmartDraw, whether the object was either transparent, translucent or opaque and why. In the example here, the student has written that the object baking paper is translucent because some of the light was passed through. To extend students' critical thinking, students are encouraged to describe the similarities between opaque, translucent and transparent objects. In this example, the student has written that opaque and translucent objects either allow for some or all of the light to be blocked. Students may also record that translucent and transparent objects allow for some or all of the light to pass through. Throughout the experiment with Constantina, you saw her refer back to a digital application called SmartDraw. Let me briefly talk to you about why we have incorporated this technology into our experiment. This digital resource has the ability to draw representations, include graphs and measurements, insert text, as well as the option to upload photographs. Students in this experiment use this technology to allow them to record accurate and honest observations. 
to label and add their ideas and to represent their findings in a photograph. Both Constantina and I like this technology, not only because students can use it in a safe and appropriate way, but because this digital resource adds to a student's technological skill and allows them to map out the science concept in a way that caters for multiple learning styles. If you are interested in this software, you'll be able to download it from www.smartdraw.com. Next, we have a quick little video showing you guys all the functions and capabilities this software has to offer. To conclude, this is an engaging and authentic experiment that requires children to use different transparent, translucent and opaque objects to explore the concept of shadows. Children should be able to understand from this experiment that a shadow is created by an object blocking the light source. It is also an easily accessible experiment for teachers to implement in classrooms as transparent, translucent and opaque objects exist around the classroom. For those who are curious, the next lesson would focus on how shadow sizes change based on how close they are to a light source.